Hi, I'm Paul Comfort. Welcome to this edition of Transit Unplugged. Today we travel to the beautiful state of Hawaii, where we talk to J. Roger Morton, the CEO of Oahu Transit Services, about what it's like to run a transit system for an entire island of a million people, including Honolulu, Waikiki, and the areas way out that are sparsely populated. We'll also talk about the upcoming third rail elevated driverless train system that's coming to Oahu soon. All that on this edition of Transit Unplugged. What does it mean to be a successful public transit agency? What are you doing to lead the way? It's time to learn from the top transit professionals in North America. This is Transit Unplugged with your host, Paul Comfort. Hi, this is Paul Comfort, and on our podcast today, we have as our guest, J. Roger Morton, President and General Manager of The Bus, The Handy Van, which is the o- Oahu Transit Services. That's right. I'm here in Hawaii. <laughs> it's great to be here with Roger. Roger, thanks for being with us today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. I'm happy to have you guys visit our little transit system here in the middle of the Pacific. Uh, we have a great, great system here, and i uh, just like to speak a little bit about it. Uh, we carry about 70 million. Our, our claim to fame here is we have the highest per capita ridership in the country for an all-bus transit system really uh, and you know we, we are our city has been investing a lot in transit in the last few years we've got I've been showing Paul some great facilities that we have and we have our rail system uh, that we're building that we're planning to open in 2020 that's going to be uh, a real uh, a shot in the arm for transit here uh, and it can only build on what's already been a successful program that's great. So let's talk a little bit about Oahu itself and the role transit plays here. So Oahu is like, tell us about this one island, it's where Honolulu, all that kind of stuff. Like, Sure. I mean, we're in the middle of the Pacific. We're probably the most isolated place on earth. If you go halfway between us and San Francisco, you're probably further away from land than anywhere else in the world. Wow. Uh, so we're an island, uh, we're a tropical island, just, uh, just a little bit south of the tropics. Uh, and we're 650 square miles. We have... Uh, Two mountain ranges that provide the spine for the for the island with a little central plain in the middle. Our island is geography because of that is largely linear. We're really a thirty mile long city that's about four miles wide. Mm. Uh, uh, we have a pleasant climate, and so from my point of view, we have the best environment in the country for providing good public transportation. How many people live in Oahu? Uh, just shy of one million by the last count. Okay. Uh, we may be uh, actually old. We may be a million now. We probably are when the next count, because I think we were about 17,000 shy of a million, uh, the last census count. And so people know about Honolulu when they think about Hawaii, and that's on this island. That's the capital of the, of the state. Yeah, well, Honolulu, uh, there is a census place called Honolulu, but really it's the city and county of Honolulu. So the entire island is part of the uh, city and county of Honolulu, and that's our service area. So we service island-wide. Uh, we have uh, a pretty dynamic urban system, but we also have a very dynamic uh, and, and popular uh, suburban and rural system that comprises uh, the bus and the handy van. So uh, you were telling me earlier, but you could tell our listeners, um, how are you uh, governmentally situated? How does, how does it all work here? Well, uh, we as the Oahu Transit Services, Inc., are a partly a con- contractor and partly a instrumentality. We're really a quasi uh, portion of the of the city government here, the city and county government. Uh, not unlike, say, Milwaukee is mm. very similar to okay. uh, the way that we're uh, set up. Uh, and so, our job, my job, is to run the operations, to hire the folks, to make the schedules, to uh, to run a good operation. By contract, uh, the actual transit policy making is vested in the city government, in the Department of Transportation Services, uh, and that group is responsible for uh, for providing funding and for setting up transit policy. So our, our mandate is really operations, day-to-day operations. And you showed me some of it today. I'm very impressed with the operations you have here. So um, number of buses, that kind of stuff, number of employees, budget, give us a kind of a general feel for that. Well, we have uh, 540 fixed route buses. We have 180 paratransit vehicles. We also con- subcontract out about 20% of our paratransit service. Altogether, we have slightly south of 1,900 employees. 
Uh, we uh, have a budget of about 250 million a year, 254 this year. Um, we carry about 70 million passengers per year on our fixed route and about 1.2 million on our paratransit operation. Very good. And so, um, how how is the operation divided up? You've got your main garage here, and then. Well, we have. Uh, I, have I have three operating facilities. I have two fixed route facilities. Uh, the one we're at right here, as you you call it, the main. It's got about 280 buses. The balance of buses are in a facility that's about uh, eight miles away from us. Uh, contiguous to this facility, we have a we have a paratransit facility where we do all of our paratransit maintenance. Uh, we do operate some paratransit vehicles from our other facility. Um, we also have uh, about eight state-of-the-art transit centers uh, around the island. Uh, and uh, as I say, we're you know developing a fixed guideway system that's going to be the first nation's first driverless automated transit system. Uh, it's a elevated system. Uh, and it will interface with the bus as we go on in the future. We're going to be integrating both our fares uh, and our, our planning and our scheduling of vehicles so we have a, a seamless system as much as possible for all of our regular uh, transit users. So uh, Roger was showing me this today as we drove around the island, this uh, elevated guideway. So it's considered, it's a third rail system, right? It is a uh, it is not as large as a BART system in terms of car size and length of train. But it is, an, it is a heavy rail system in that it is a third rail system, uh, doesn't have cantonary wires, never goes on the street, always stays in its own separate guideway. Uh, so I, I think the Europeans would call it an intermediate capacity system. Uh, and uh, it, it's sort of a cross between a heavy rail system and an airport people mover in the U.S. Okay. And what's the status of the construction? About half the system, half the guideway has been built so far. Uh, and uh, it's scheduled for opening in 2020. Okay, uh, right around the corner uh, in, in and, transit time. <laughs> uh, and as we speak, that's the first. The first uh, segment is 10 miles long. Okay. Uh, the second segment is under construction now. It'll get to our facility here, uh, and the third facility will be from here to our Alamoana Shopping Center, which is right on the doorsteps of Waikiki. Gotcha. Very good. So uh, you got uh, you got a great uh, extensive bus and uh, bus network and paratransit network that covers the whole island. Then you'll have this big rail line going through. Um, so uh, it's very exciting, actually. I think it's very and, and the state legislature just put up an extra big hunk of money. I heard. Yeah, the legislature uh, we did as uh, as is not unusual. We had a funding shortage. Our projections for the cost of the system uh, were off. Uh, and so the legislature just two weeks ago passed another funding bill that would provide another $2.3 billion uh, or so of funding for what will be an $8.1 billion system uh, when it's completed. So $8.1 billion in construction costs. $8.1 billion in construction uh, and soft costs uh, does not include financing costs, which would probably add another five or $600, $600 million. So about a nine, an eight point eight or a nine billion dollar system, if all goes as planned. And this is like a, it, you and I were talking, is similar to a project I was working on in Maryland called the Purple Line, which we had we outsourced to a concessionaire to do design, build, operate. Is that going to be similar to this? Yeah, uh, we you know we, as I said, Paul, we don't, uh, we're not, uh, we have a separate organization that is responsible for construction of the of the system and. The model that the that that the city is using for that is a DBOM, a design, build, operate, maintain system. Uh, the main system supplier is Ansaldo out of out of Italy, uh, recently purchased by Hitachi out of okay. Japan. Yes. Uh, the cars uh, about uh, there's about about four or five uh, train sets have been delivered uh, today as we speak. I understand this is going to be our first live electric test where the cars will move under their own uh, propulsion. Um, they've had them out on the guideway before with a locomotive pushing them, uh, but this will be the first time that they're going to be operating today with a pure electric operated system. And then that, that'll set it up for probably 18 months of, of uh, system testing to mm -hmm. uh, make sure that everything uh, is proper. Transit is viewed very positively here on the islands, aren't they? Isn't it? Yes, we're, we're very fortunate that uh, in my career, uh, there's always been a very high level of, of public commitment to, up to public transportation, both at our at our city level and at our state level. 
Uh, and th our population here is very proud of our system. Uh, it is a, uh, a very fine grain system that goes to almost all neighborhoods. Mm. Uh, it has a heavy ridership still, uh, and uh, it is ridden by, uh, by middle class folks, uh, by everybody on the island. So uh, it is uh, a great system. I'm very proud of it myself. I'm proud of my staff. That's great. So you mentioned your career. Let's talk about that a little bit. Tell us about your career and how you ended up. A lot of people are very interested in CEOs, you know, they're, they're kind of celebrity in our culture today. And so tell us a little bit about how you got here, how you became CEO. Well, I grew up with the bus really as a professional. I, I when I finished my college, so uh, way back in the seventies, uh, I, uh, it was at the time of our first oil embargo. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I was looking for a job and I was looking to do something that was socially responsible. And I thought transit was the right thing to do, and I've never looked back since then. Uh, I've had a few changes in, in jobs since then. I've worked a little bit as a consultant. Uh, I've uh, done. I've worked for some uh, a private co contractors, uh, but I have been the. I I started uh, about twenty five years ago with this co company, and I became the CEO about twelve years ago. Very good. So we're talking to J. Roger Morton, who's president and general manager of Oahu Transit Services here in Hawaii, the same island where Honolulu and Waikiki are, two of the three probably most famous places for the mainland. We hear about Maui, and then we hear about these. So uh, are there other similar transit systems on the other islands? There are. Uh, every island has a transit system. Now, uh, Honolulu is a major metropolitan area. Right. And the other ones are, are small cities or, or rural areas. And so the type of transit is is quite different than uh, than what would be we would be, uh, you know, we would be more like a a a, a well developed midwestern city rather in comparison to our neighbor islands, which are more rural and smaller. Gotcha. So we were over earlier talking to your training manager about uh, kind of the family atmosphere that you have here, and that when people start to work here, they oftentimes will work their whole career here. Is that right? Uh, yes. In fact, uh, we have generational uh, people here who uh, have worked have worked for us, and their their sons work for us, and I think I've even seen some grandsons that have uh, worked for us, <laughs> Isn't in, even something? in my time. So wow, uh, it, it is. You know, there's not as in in, in Hawaii. Uh, as much as we are an insular place, there's not as much job mobility as there is on the mainland. And plus, uh, people like doing what they're doing here with us. Uh, and so we do have many, many employees with 30, 35 years of service. That's great. How is your safety record? Uh, when I compare myself using the NTD statistics, uh, in terms of collisions, we're uh, maybe a quarter down from the top. So we're not the, uh, we don't have the, absolute best record. Uh, but having said that, uh, having that high per capita rate, our nemesis is standing passengers. We have a lot of standing okay. passengers. And as a result of that, uh, we have more than our share of, of falls uh, on the buses. And that's, uh, that's really our hit program is to try to do everything we can by the way we outfit buses, by the way we train operators to uh, recognize that that, uh, that, car that precious cargo behind them uh, is not necessarily seated. There, there's a lot that are standing all the time. We have a very high percentage of seniors that mm -hmm. ride our system. Uh, it's thirty dollars a year for a senior to ride our wow. system. Wow! Uh, so we have a tremendous. I think we have. Uh, I have fifty-five thousand uh, senior passes in circulation, uh, and so uh, just just given uh, the dynamics of what we do, uh, it, it is a tough environment. Honolulu has, surprisingly, for those that don't live here, not surprising to me, but Honolulu mm -hmm. has some of the worst traffic congestion in the nation. Uh, we are normally ranked in the top five of the most congested cities uh, after Los Angeles and after after things, and that's in terms of time it takes to uh, to co to complete a commute. Many of our folks come from uh, uh, from 25, 30 miles away, both by car and by transit. Uh, and so it, there's a lot of long trips. Again, it goes back to our, our linear city uh, that we have mountains behind us, very beautiful mountains, but uh, we're only about four miles wide on our coastal belt. And so many of the trips are, are somewhere along that belt and they tend to be 
further away than in a grid city like Chicago or a city like that where you have a lot of east and west that go deep. I got gotcha. you. So other than the rail system, I know you've got a lot of other innovative things going on. Tell us about a couple of the new programs. I mean, just a simple thing. We were walking around. You told me that uh, a new program, safety program you've got is you've got all the drivers now in vests, uh, safety vests. Yeah, and you know, a lot. some other systems, many other systems do that, but it was new to us. Uh, and uh, we recently required all of our, of our drivers. Basically, the rule is if they're in our parking lots or else if they're in traffic, uh, outside of the bus in traffic, they must wear their vests. We don't require them to wear them when they drive, but in fact, uh, it just by observation, it looks like about 80% of them ha are wearing the vest. And almost all of them have uh, expressed uh, that they're happy with the vest, new vest yes. policy. Uh, for me, it communicates safety to our employees. It also communicates safety to the public. Uh, when they see us, they see us as, as a professional uh, group. Uh, and so I think it just enhances our ability to communicate a safety message to all of our workforce. Absolutely. Very um, visible, yeah. Yeah. That's good. What other, what other kind of uh, projects or innovations are you working on here in Oahu Transit Services? Well, we're doing a few things. Uh, we have, uh, we're about uh, a year out from turning on our new account-based smart card system. Okay. Uh, that's a system uh, that will be not unlike Chicago or Portland right now. Instead of being a card-based system where all the fare transactions are stored on a card, it will be an account-based system where we rely upon uh, very fast communication with the bus mm. so that the the decision on whether the fare is has been paid or not is done in the back office and that means that that back office has to complete a transaction in 500 milliseconds wow uh, so we're equipping all of our buses with uh, cellular systems uh, we have some business rules because you can't guarantee that all the time uh, but uh, it's going to be a flexible system that we're going to use both on uh, on our uh, on our system and also on uh, our rail system, which will be an integrated system. We're also making provision. Uh, we just rolled out uh, bike sharing on okay. the island. Uh, our system is called Bicky, uh, and we're making provision that our smart card system would support um, the bikes and also our rural islands, uh, our mm -hmm. neighbor islands. If, if they want to participate and they don't want to put up their own system, We've designed the architecture of our system so that we can add additional agencies. So conceivably, in 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 uh, five years, we could have a statewide smart card system. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, we're also uh, doing some initial things. We have money in our budget to purchase some electric buses this year. Uh, we are also in the process of designing uh, a BRT light system that'll be really an urban circulator, but limited stop, and it'll be, the purpose of it will be to connect uh, 50,000 riders a day uh, from the eastern terminus of our rail system into Waikiki. Okay. Uh, and that, that'll be a very high volume bus route uh, that we anticipate at peak times, we'll be running the bus every two minutes, every three minutes um, in uh, nice. for, for that route. Yeah. So that planning is going on right now, that'll be a, a complete replacement of all street furniture. It'll include some traffic engineering, some traffic signal uh, work, uh, some off street uh, fare vending. So exciting things for us uh, once we do that. And that'll be basically a way that we can extend our rail system into our most uh, densely populated, both in terms of jobs and people, mm -hmm. region of our island using rubber tire vehicles. That's great. I noticed Waikiki, is, it's, parts of it, it looked like uh, Beverly Hills. Uh, high-end stores, you know, very fancy, and then you've got a big urban city like Honolulu, and they're just, how close, they're pretty close, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're really, classically, they're, they're, they're split by what we call the Alawai Canal. Okay. Um, but really, for all intents and purposes, uh, it is just one small neighborhood of, of uh, Honolulu, really. That's interesting, wow. What what um across Amer across America there's uh you and I were talking earlier over lunch about trends that are happening mm -hmm. ridership trends how to deal with driverless autonomous shuttles uh, what about Uber and Lyft and those talk to us about uh, how uh, Oahu Transit Services is working with these kind of trends. Uh, well, we have seen a a uh, in this particularly this last year we have seen our ridership drop as many other places have dropped too. Uh, I have been told that there are as many as 5,000 Uber and Lyft drivers uh, on this little island 
Uh, now, granted, they don't all work f um, uh, full time. A lot of part, a lot of them are part time, but they've had a tremendous. I think they they've had a tremendous impact on our taxi industry, uh, and there's no doubt in my mind that they've had. They're partly responsible for our drop in ridership. Uh, has been these new things. So the challenge for us, we've talked to Uber uh, a, num a couple of times, and we've tried to figure out a way that we could make uh, their business model mesh with our business model. So far, uh, we have not been able to do that. One of the stumbling blocks for us is accessible vehicles for the lift companies. We do, on our paratransit side, we, we have a large paratransit system too. Uh, and on our paratransit side, we do contract out about 20% of our service to uh, third-party providers, primarily taxi and some small lift companies. Uh, and uh, we're looking to uh, to improve the administration of the way we do that. We have some new apps that we're going to uh, have the independent operators uh, uh, use for us to capture some of the transit data that we need to capture for the NTD. So. Very good. So um, how, uh, so you, your ridership, your, uh, when you start operating this new um, rail system and you have good integration, that actually could be something that feeds your system and not just take away riders, right? Well, my deputy takes about two hours to get to work uh, from where the rail system is designed to, to help. And uh, the rail ride for her would be about 34 minutes. Wow. Uh, so, you it's know, make we're, her we're, life a lot better. We're, we're, it will make her life better, make a lot of people's lives a lot better uh, because of, of our tremendous traffic congestion. And on our little island, again, uh, we are, we're building 20,000 more homes out in that region. Wow. We're not building any more highways. Uh, and so it, it is, uh, you know, it is, I, I have no doubt that, that the rail system will from day one uh, be a very, very successful system, but also over the next 25, 30 years, as that region builds out even more, uh, there's only one place for it to really go, and that's to high capacity rail. Hmm. Very good. So we're talking to Roger Morton, who is the president and general manager of Oahu Transit Services uh, in Hawaii. And he runs the bus and the handy van and is part of the team putting together uh, a new heavy rail system through the island here. It's a very vibrant transit system, high usership, um, high ridership, and the percentage of people that use it, you're telling me, as a ratio of the ridership, you're really the number one per capita? Yeah, we run about 75 trips per capita per year. Wow. Uh, and just by comparison, I think uh, uh, the New York region does about 225. New York City does about 450. Uh, but after that, it, as everybody knows, it yes. drops off uh, a lot. Yes. So, uh, you know, we have, uh, we have Boston, Washington, San Francisco ahead of us. Uh, and then we, we vie with Chicago for being fifth or sixth. Uh, sometimes Chicago is, sometimes we yeah. are. Now that that's a that's obviously a function of our one million population versus a twelve million population in other places, right. uh, and so it's not an absolute number; it's a relative number. But the percentage of people that are impacted by your service here in this island—you and I were talking—it uh, it sounds to me like more than half the island, the families are using this service every day. Yeah, that's I, phenomenal. I, it is about about half. Um, we have a, a tremendous senior. We have a UPass uh, component, uh, and in uh, thirteen uh, schools. Um, oh, some, they they use your system as well. Some of them have a uh, two of them. Two of the large ones, the University of Hawaii and Hawaii Pacific University, have a fee based system. The others have a uh, discounted semester pass system. Uh, so we have we have a, a large ridership of university students as well. Uh, That's good. And you have a decent fare box recovery ratio on your fixed route side. What is it you tell me? Well, it's it's, it's 27%, yeah. uh, and our fares are, are fairly low. The seniors are essentially free. I right. mean, it's uh, $30. That's almost the processing cost. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, bus passes are $60 a month for adults, and we don't have any zones. We don't have any uh, surcharges for expresses, one fare for all. Uh, we are, uh, in uh, next month, in October 1st, we are eliminating our paper transfers. This has been somewhat of a controversy, and we're going to substitute day passes, which you'll be able to purchase on the vehicle, like you get a transfer now. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to eliminate our paper transfers. We Paradoxically, we may turn them back on again after we turn on our, our smart card system. Uh, 
it, it uh, is a way, though, that uh, we, we are committed to getting rid of the paper transfers. And uh, this, is the, this is one of our strategies is to do it now and put the, the, the day pass in now. And then we plan to open that, uh, that um, smart card system in test around July of next year okay. uh, and roll it out, start rolling it out to everybody around the beginning of 2019. And then by the time the rail comes online, people will be used to using that. But it, they, they get the, the people, uh, because we are, uh, we are putting in a driverless system, we're also putting in stations that uh, do not have uh, ticket uh, cashiers or ticket takers. There'll be automated stations as well. Uh, there'll be rail gates for the stations. And you must have a machine readable document in order to get into the rail gate. So we're, uh, we're looking at 2020 to have that done. We're gonna hopefully get all the bugs out on our, on our bus system before we uh, turn on uh, the rail system. But that's our plan is to get it, uh, get it tested and implemented uh, and fully used by the time we open up rail in 2020. That's awesome. Well, Roger, thanks so much for being with us and inviting us into your office today and telling us all about your system. It's been a pleasure, Paul. I very much enjoyed uh, having this conversation. Thank you. Again, we've been interviewing today Roger Morton, CEO of Oahu Transit Services in Hawaii, who's a really an industry leader in all the exciting new developments they've got happening in their transit system. Thanks for listening today. I'm Paul Comfort. Have a good one. You've been listening to Transit Unplugged, powered by Trapeze Group. To stay up to date, subscribe on iTunes or Google Play, or join the conversation at transitunplugged.com. Thanks for listening.